Today, we're exploring the humerus, the upper arm bone that bridges the shoulder and elbow. The humerus is the bone of the arm, the longest and strongest bone in the upper limb. Classified as a long bone, the humerus has three key parts, the upper end, the shaft, and the lower end. The upper end has five key anatomical features. Let's explore them one by one. The head is rounded and smooth, articulating with the glenoid cavity to form a ball and socket joint of shoulder. The humerus has two types of necks. The anatomical neck is located just below the head of the humerus and serves as the attachment site for the joint capsule. The surgical neck is situated below the greater and lesser tubercles. It is a common fracture site, and injuries here may impact the nearby axillary nerve. The humerus features two prominent tubercles. The greater tubercle is located on the lateral side of the humerus and has three distinct facets, providing attachment points for the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor muscles, which are part of the rotator cuff group. The lesser tubercle is found on the anterior aspect of the humerus and serves as the attachment site for the remaining rotator cuff muscle, the subscapularis. The intertubercular sulcus is a groove on the humerus that houses the long head of the biceps tendon. It serves as the attachment site for the pectoralis major on its lateral lip, the teres major on its medial lip, and the latissimus dorsi on its floor. The shaft of the humerus is cylindrical at the top and triangular at the bottom, with its lower half has three borders and three surfaces. The anterior border of the humerus is smooth and rounded. Its medial border features the medial supracondylar ridge, and the lateral border features the lateral supracondylar ridge, both of which serve as muscle attachment sites. The surfaces of the humeral shaft include the anterolateral surface with the deltoid tuberosity for deltoid muscle attachment, the anteromedial surface with the intertubercular sulcus for biceps tendon and muscle attachments, and the posterior surface with the radial groove for the radial nerve and triceps muscle attachment. The lower end of the humerus is flattened in the anteroposterior direction and expanded laterally. It includes both articular parts for joint surfaces and non-articular parts for ligament and muscle attachments. The articular parts of the lower end of the humerus consist of the capitulum, which is rounded and convex to articulate with the radial head, and the trochlea, which is pulley-shaped to fit with the trochlear notch of the ulna. The non-articular parts of the lower humerus include the medial epicondyle, which provides origin for flexor muscles, and the lateral epicondyle, which provides origin for extensor muscles. The coronoid fossa accommodates the coronoid process of the ulna during elbow flexion. Similarly, the radial fossa provides space for the radial head when the elbow is flexed. On the posterior aspect, the olecranon fossa allows the olecranon process of the ulna to fit during elbow extension. The humerus has numerous muscle attachments, 23 in total. All four rotator cuff muscles attach to the tubercles of the humerus. The supraspinatus attaches to the upper facet of the greater tubercle of the humerus. The infraspinatus attaches to the middle facet and the teres minor attaches to the lower facet. Lastly, the subscapularis muscle attaches to the lesser tubercle of the humerus. The teres major attaches to the medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus. The latissimus dorsi attaches to the floor of the sulcus, and the pectoralis major attaches to the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus on the humerus. The triceps attach to the posterior surface of the humerus, with the lateral head attaching above and the medial head below.
the deltoid attaches to the deltoid tuberosity on the anterolateral surface, while the coracobrachialis attaches to a rough strip on the medial border of the shaft. The brachialis attaches to the lower part of the anterior surface of the humeral shaft. The brachioradialis attaches to the proximal part of the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus, while the extensor carpi radialis longus attaches to the distal part of the lateral supracondylar ridge. The common flexor origin on the medial epicondyle of the humerus serves as the attachment site for the flexor muscles of the anterior forearm, while the common extensor origin on the lateral epicondyle serves as the attachment site for the extensor muscles of the posterior forearm. The humerus ossifies from one primary center in the shaft and seven secondary centers. At the upper end, secondary centers are found in the head, greater tubercle, and lesser tubercle. At the lower end, secondary centers include the capitulum, trochlea, and lateral and medial epicondyles. The medial epicondyl epiphysis fuses later than the others, around 16 years of age, which can sometimes appear as a fracture on x-rays. To determine the side of the humerus, hold the bone with the head facing up and medially. The radial fossa and coronoid fossa should be positioned down and anteriorly. So, can you guess the side of the humerus given below? It is the left humerus. Humeral fractures can affect various parts of the bone. At the upper end, fractures at the surgical neck are, are common and often linked to osteoporosis. In the shaft, fractures can be transverse, typically from direct trauma, or spiral, often due to indirect trauma. At the lower end, supracondylar fractures frequently occur in children, just above the condyles following falls from the outstretched hand. Several nerves are closely related to the humerus and can be injured in corresponding fractures. The axillary nerve is at risk in fractures around the surgical neck. The radial nerve runs along the radial groove and may be damaged in shaft fractures. The median nerve is vulnerable in supracondylar fractures, while the ulnar nerve is prone to injury in fractures involving the medial epicondyle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more anatomy insights. See you in the next video.